Okay, here we go with Christian Guitar. This is a preliminary video uh, covering a few pages at the beginning of the book. Um, I want you to turn with me to page number two. Uh, it's an introduction. It goes over a few things, and then we'll proceed going forward. The first thing that we come to is, is on page two after the introduction is tablature and chord grids. Uh, the tablature uh, is demonstrated, T-A-B. You see that there are six lines, and those six lines correspond to the six strings of the guitar, acoustic or electric, six strings. Now, on tablature, the top line is like the highest pitch of the guitar, so that's the first string. So, it's like the guitar that we play this way is turned that way. And this top string is the highest pitch, so it's at the top, and the lowest is the line at the very bottom. Okay, so that's how tablature works. Now, the numbers, the numbers on the tablature actually have nothing to do with our fingers. It has to do with the frets of the guitar. So as we begin, we go to fret one, fret two, fret three. So if there's a three on that top line, oh, we've got a zero on that top line. That means we play the first string open. The next thing they have is a number two on the third line down. That's the third string, the G string. So when we put a finger, it could be our second finger, it could be our first finger, but when we put a finger down on the third string, this is from the book, second fret, that becomes an A. Then they have another string mentioned. There's a number seven on the string number five. I know that the, the third fret on the fifth string is C, the fifth fret is D, so this is actually a, an E. So we have an E seven, seventh fret on the fifth string. Then they have a twelfth fret on that fifth string, and that's the octave of that fifth string open. So if, if it was a zero on the fifth string, that would be an A, a low A. When we put a finger on the twelfth fret of that same fifth string, string number five, one, two, three, four, five, at the twelfth fret, that's the octave, that's an A, but it's high A. Low A is zero on, on the fifth string, High A is 12th fret on the 5th string. I added something in my book right past the number 12. I put a 2 on the 5th string and a 3 on the 6th string. They're on top of each other. There's a 2 on the 5th. I can't do that. There's a 2 on the 5th and a 3 on the 6th. So you would put a finger on fret 2 of 5th string, fret 3 of 6th uh, string, and if you played those two notes, Really, if you played those and several more, that's a G chord, and so we're forming chords. All right, then we go down to the chord grids. If you'll just look at this, I mean, I, 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 that is probably the best example of what a chord grid is that I've ever seen, and I've been doing this for close to 30 years now. Okie dokie. It explains that the very dark line is the nut. That's where the strings rest, and then the horizontal lines are the frets, the vertical lines are the strings. So there will never be more than six lines unless you're doing a, a metal uh, guitar class with a seven string guitar. Or if you're doing a ukulele class with only four strings, there would be, you know, just four lines going down. But anyway, this grid shows us where to put our fingers on the strings to make a chord. The first chord that they're showing us is a C chord. It's a full C chord. Now, if you look to the far right, your right, there is an X over the top of that dark line, which is the nut where the strings rest. The X means don't play that string at all. When you strum this chord or you finger style this chord, do not play that sixth string. Then you'll see over the third string and the first string, there are zeros. It's really the letter O. So the O stands for open. When we strum this chord or finger style this chord, we're going to play the third and the first string, but we're not going to put any fingers on them, but we're going to play them in the chord. And then we have the dots. And um, if you follow those dots, you would put your first finger on the uh, second string first fret. Now, the way this grid is shown, the way I know that I'm going to put my first finger on the second string 
second string first fret is at the bottom of the grid they've got numbers and at the bottom there's a one so that means my first finger second string and it happens to go on the first fret then they've got the second finger on the fourth string and it happens to be on the second fret then they have the ring finger the third finger on the fifth string and it happens to be on the third fret just happens to be that in this chord the third finger is placed on the third fret of the fifth string the second finger is placed on the second fret of the fourth string and the first finger is placed on the first fret of the second string it just happens that the one two three that we use for the chord happens to fall on the one first fret second second fret third fret just happens okay now the next one is a bar chord and uh, when we get ready for bar chords I will uh, show you some tricks and some ways to play it sound good if you struggle with your finger bending down but if you look at it they're showing us there's an X over the sixth string and there's an X over the first string don't play those strings this is called a root five power up root five bar chord because the root note like if it's uh, in the key of C C D E F G A B C that you know the do re mi fa sol la ti do the key uh, the root note is the is the key you're in C and so your first finger for this one I don't they've got it on the seventh fret so they're doing an E but if we put that first finger on the third fret and then barred uh, with our third finger skip a fret and do and bar those that would be a C chord but the reason I'm blah, 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 is because we're not ready for that we'll come to that later okay turn the page please turn the page please now there's a lot of stuff here most people you probably are one of the most people won't read a word of this but I'm telling you man this will make you a better player faster if you'll look at this I wrote on my book I wrote in it yeah now they're showing us a picture of a real cool guy standing up playing an electric guitar there are two things that are well there's three there are three things that I want to point out in this number one where he has that strap adjusted for that guitar is not down at his knees when you play down at your knees everything is exaggerated this wrist is exaggerated that hand is exaggerated somehow Green Day and all the other boys boy bands made us think that that was cool all right it looks cool yeah but we're not there yet we need to have that guitar up where it's a natural like if i if i were to hold my hands out and turn that one over and then bring that one in if i go too far uh, it starts hurting i mean it it you you just got to get it where where it works for you but so the height of the guitar is one thing the second thing is look on that picture there's some space between his elbow and his body look at it there's space you don't want to play like that all cramped up they let the space and the third thing is his wrist we used to have these uh, action figures called GI Joe's and their wrists would do that you know it was hinged and so you you you're gonna need that either sitting or standing you're gonna need this left hand that does the the fingering on the strings for the chords to be able to bend and have that bent for you now let's look at a guy sitting down I'm not sure but I think it's the same guy okay look at his right leg and foot it's elevated when you're sitting down you need to elevate that right leg so that uh, you've got something to set your guitar on so if you're sitting you know in a certain type of chair like he is that's a pretty good position I would like that railing of that chair to be up about three or four more inches for me to get my knee up for my on my right leg now the second thing look at the part of the guitar that's resting it, it's that after the small part of the guitar and it curves up it curves up and goes down that's what's resting and I'll tell you this you you really don't want that guitar like parallel to your body you want the bottom of that guitar so here's my body but I want the bottom of my guitar bottom of my guitar tilted out a little bit it helps to see the strings and the frets and the strumming if it's totally parallel to you you won't see anything so tilt the bottom out just a little bit oh ho 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 look at the wrist on that guy see how it's a GI Joe bent wrist and look at the space between his forearm and his leg huge huge 
huge. Okay, so the next thing is about tuning. Uh, you can get a free tuner. Uh, and then you just make that needle kind of stay up there. Uh, there's also tuning to the guitar itself, and that's on page number five. Um, we'll go over that. If you need, if you need, if you need some instruction on that, let me know. I'll be, I'll be happy to, to show you that. Then there's some tuning tips. Now they're showing how the, how to hold the the pick. You'll see how much of the pick. Uh, these are teardrop picks. Most, you know, this this is the common. There's an advertisement for PB. Uh, there's a uh, common teardrop, and the reason they call it teardrop, if you turn it over and lick it and stick it on your face, it looks like a clown's tear. Okay, now. What you're going to do is you're going to cover about two-thirds of that pick with your thumb. I've got on the back, I'm covering about two-thirds of the pick on the back. The, the perfect, you know, model is to, to curl your first finger and actually have the pick resting there. So I would cover and curl and I would have that. Molly Tuttle. Uh, look up Molly Tuttle and watch her play. She is the perfect wrist. She is a great flat picker, bluegrass singer. She's just seems to be a really cool person. But anyway, she, she's got that perfect. I don't play that way. I began finger styling about the time I began strumming. And so when I hold the pick, these three fingers are, are not up in here. They're not up in here. They're down. And there's a reason for that because when we play sometimes with the pick and then we use also finger two, sometimes finger three, which is M and A, um, then I'm ready to go with that. All right, so the next thing is, I don't know if you can see the pick, but when you strum the strings, you're not going to come straight across. You're going you're gonna to move that pick so it's flop, 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 because if you hold it straight, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be loud and very unmusical. So you want to tilt that, that pick, and when you come up, you change the tilt. And I'll teach you how we kind of flick it, flick it at the bottom, or the first two strings, which are toward the floor, the bottom. And uh, so we strum, flick, strum, flick. We'll get into that. All right, look at the left hand. Look at that, where that thumb is. Now, depending on the size of your hand, if you've already started, you may have developed some bad habits. Don't do that. Break those habits. Cut that hand off. Reattach a new hand and start over. Okay, what you don't want to do is grab the guitar like you'd grab a baseball bat or <clears throat> an axe where you're wrapping yourself and it's <clears throat> right in flat here. What you want to do like this is the guitar neck. You want your thumb and your fingers to have a little space. You don't want to be flat. You want to have a little space. We'll talk more about that. And then the fingering hand is kind of an over exaggeration. But I will point out, this is at the bottom of five on the bottom right corner. I will point out that you'll notice that even though it's the guy's hand looks very arthritic and, and cranked really his fingers that he's the fingers he is not using the two three and the four they're not like an okay sign far far away from the guitar they're close and that is huge let's see if there's anything else nope that'll do it for this video uh, we're gonna go to the next pages on a separate video god bless you i hope your day goes well I do.